What's going on guys, my name's Theoatrix and today I'm presenting a range of Slayer tips and tricks, most of which you probably haven't heard of before. These tips range from low to high level Slayer, so there's definitely something in here for every player out there. Over 70% of you guys watching aren't subscribed to my channel, so if you enjoy my content, be sure to sub and help me reach 200k. Let's get into it. When you're setting up a cannon, it takes around 10 seconds to fully set up. Well, you can set it up in under 3 seconds by using each piece of the cannon on the cannon that's on the ground. When you're on a Kurask or Turoth Slayer task, you can use the Saradomen Godsword special attack on them, and even though you won't hit anything because of the Leaf Bladed requirement, you'll still heal your health and prayer points for the amount that you would have hit. If you train your Slayer AFK a lot, then it's a great idea to use ornament kits. When you die with an ornament kit on your items, there's no fee at the gravestone to get them back. This also works with recolor and upgrade kits, so you can use the volcanic whip mix on a whip or the ward upgrade kit and save yourself some money if you die. This is why ornament kits skyrocketed after the gravestone update, although they have come down a little bit over time. Before I get further into the methods, I have a quick word from today's sponsor, Frag Pro Shooter. Frag is one of the best rated mobile games of 2020, available for free on iOS and Android. Almost 50 million players take it to the Frag Pro Battlegrounds and every day, around 1 million players play actively. In Frag, you put together a team of 5 characters and go head to head against another player online in an effort to destroy the enemy's tower. Throughout your battle, you strategically switch between your five heroes to gain an advantage, where each hero has its own powers and abilities. There's over 80 unique heroes to collect, and your best bet is to build your team to fit your gameplay style. The game was built for mobile, and runs flawlessly in either first person or third person shooter mode. The standard game mode is 1v1, but there's also a 2v2 game mode where you can build a team of six with either one of your friends or a random player. By using the link in the description, you get a free reward package, even for those people that have already installed Frag. You get 500 coins, a golden chest, and 50 diamonds, which will definitely give you a head start on building the best team you can. So use the link below to download and play today. Thanks to Frag Pro Shooter for sponsoring this video. A tip that's more useful for bossing and the inferno, but also works with Slayer, if you bring along an ancient mace to the combat dummy in your player owned house, you'll be able to heal well above your maximum prayer points by using the special attack. This can help prolong your trips. With the recent release of the Sins of the Father quest, Bloodvelds have become a far quicker Slayer task than they were before. In the Maya Ditch Laboratories, there's a number of mutated Bloodvelds in a multi-combat area and you can use a cannon here. If you go for the faster Slayer experience, Bloodvelds are usually a task that you would skip, but not after this update. There's nowhere in the game that you can kill greater demons in a multi-combat cannonable area. But in the Chasm of Fire, if you set up your cannon on this tile here, then use ranged on the demons, your cannon will consistently attack the demons around you because of their spawn points, and you'll get almost as much experience as if it was a multi-combat cannon area. You should always be using your cannonballs on the cannon when reloading it instead of left clicking it, as it saves two game ticks and allows you to continue attacking instantly after reloading it. When you're using a cannon in single way combat, it attacks as if it's multi-way combat if you're fighting the monster from a safe spot. This works great in Neve's Cave, where you can range them from a safe spot and have your cannon attacking all of the monsters in the room. A range of monsters in the Nightmare Zone can be counted towards your Slayer task. Dad, Arg, and the Ice Troll King are all considered trolls on a Troll Slayer task, and you can take advantage of absorptions and overloads to AFK a complete task here. The Black Demon from the Grand Tree counts as a Black Demon task, the Corrupt Lizard Man counts as a Lizard Man, Elvarg counts as a Green Dragon, and the Giant Scarab from contact counts as a scabarite task. 
When you're offered a JAD or an Inferno task and you're going for the fastest XP rates, you can switch to a regular Tsar task and burst them. In the more Ulrek region, there's enough Tsar monsters around to burst efficiently. And with the drop rates and prices of Tsar items, it's also very cost effective. Speaking of bursting, if you have an Explorer's Ring 4, you should always bring it along to burstable Slayer tasks. This allows you to high alk drops and save inventory space while you're still on the Ancient Spellbook. This is especially useful at Necrails, where you'll get so many alkables that won't fit in your invent. If you're using Duradel but haven't completed the elite Karumja Diary to be able to teleport right next to him, make use of the NPC contact spell to be able to get a new task from him anywhere. It's a great idea to bring your Bone Crusher along to all of your Slayer tasks for some passive prayer experience, but especially bring it along if the Slayer task is in the Catacombs of Kurand. When you bury bones in the Catacombs, you get prayer points restored, and the effect also works with the Bone Crusher's passive effect. So if you're doing Hellhounds, for example, you can have almost unlimited free prayer points. The Bone Crusher is charged with Ecto tokens, and you should make use of the free daily bone meal and buckets of slime from Robin, which you can get after the Mauritania Diary, to get those Ecto tokens. By default, high alchemy warnings for tradable items are turned off. This means if you misclick, you might accidentally alk an untradable item like your Bone Crusher or Void. I'm not sure why its default option is off, but to turn it on, you can right click the high alchemy spell and press warnings. A tip I talked about a lot in my 1 to 99 Slayer guide, but is so important, is to always be using the Slayer bracelets on every task. The Expeditious bracelet essentially speeds up your task by 25% requiring less monsters to finish the task. The Bracelet of Slaughter extends it by 25%, adding more to your overall task count. So with that, on Slayer tasks that don't give fast XP, you should use the Expeditious Bracelet. And on burstable tasks and faster experience tasks, use the Slaughter Bracelet to get as much fast XP out of the task as possible. Having level 88 agility unlocks every Slayer shortcut in the game, and you can use a Summer Pie to boost from level 83. Level 88 allows you to reach the Alchemical Hydra without having to run through any monsters. Level 86 lets you take a shortcut to the Calphite Queen. Level 81 lets you do every shortcut in the Fremenic Slayer dungeon. Level 80 lets you bypass the entirety of the Tavoli dungeon to get straight to Cerberus. There's so many other useful ones, but basically having a high agility level really helps to speed up your overall Slayer XP. If you play on Runelight or another third-party client, make good use of bank tags to help speed up your Slayer grind. You can create tags like Bursting, Cannon, and Prayer, and they make preparing for each task a lot quicker and a fair bit easier than just having a Slayer tab in your bank. This can overall increase your XP per hour with saving time between each task. Lastly, I want to explain double hit cannon spots. When the Slayer monster you're fighting is standing on one of these tiles shown on the screen, the cannon will fire twice every time it comes around. If a monster is larger than one tile in size, the actual position of the monster is the southwest corner of it. With this, you can position yourself in certain areas to ensure this happens as many times as possible. For AFK training, you should position yourself on the northeastern corner of your cannon, and most of the time, NPCs will end up on these double hit tiles. If you're not AFKing, you can move around and force NPCs into each position, but make sure you do that between each of your hits, otherwise you'll lose using some damage per second by moving around too much. Pretty much all third-party clients have a cannon plugin that will automatically highlight these double hit cannon spots, and you should definitely be using that if you're playing on PC. Anyways guys, that's some of the best and most obscure Slayer tricks that I could come up with. If you have any other interesting ones, be sure to leave a comment down below to help everyone out. Also, be sure to check out Frag Pro Shooter. The link to download the game is down in the description. Be sure to leave a like if you learned something interesting today. 
Thanks for watching and stay safe.